Hi, and welcome along to the AFTV Tactical Insight Show with Graham. How are you doing, Graham? Nice um, I'm glad you. that you're feeling better now. <laughs> um, I know that you, you've had a couple of weeks of a little bit of sickness, but I've been fighting over, fit. I've, I've been over it for a week, Rob. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Best friends and all that, you know, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm just glad that you're well, man. I'm glad that you're fit, strong, mm. healthy, and um, you're here. And be able to talk us through some good news, which was a big 4-0 win over Newcastle. It was just so good to have a win. I was chatting to fans after the game. Everybody had a big smile on their face. They were happy. They weren't getting carried away, but they was happy that finally, what a lot of Arsenal fans have seen since Mikel Arteta has come in, which is better performances turned into a very big win. We won a game. We actually won a game, really. First win uh, in the league. In first the Premier win league. in the league since um, January the 1st. Yep. Yeah. Um, and we're still unbeaten in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> we're up there with Liverpool and PSG because Inter Milan lost their record over the weekend. Wow. So, no, I mean, I'm only joking. <laughs> we're a long way behind those. But, yes, we had a, 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 mm. a good win, a, a good performance. Uh, and um, I'm going to talk about this performance today. And before we go into that... Mm -hmm. Um, He's got the tech going. Got the tech going. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, uh, <laughs> stats. I always like to start these videos now with a few match facts. But, uh, yeah. This was Arsenal's first win in the Premier League by three or more goals since February 2019. Wow. Wow. That just shows that, you know, we've been... We, well, under our Tessa role, we, we haven't had many shots at goal. In fact... Mm. Um, um, since he's coming, although he's obviously, as you said, he's mm. got us uh, more structured uh, and we've looked more resilient, our shots per game has been down, under Emery it was 4.5 shots per game, it's been down to 2.9 shots per game oh, under wow. Arteta, that's why we've been drawing so many games, we haven't yeah. been getting enough shots off, so this was a game when ultimately, after an underwhelming first half, it, uh, it was a more dynamic second half and we ended up comfortable winners. Mm. This is the first time that Arsenal won a Premier League game by three-plus goal margin and kept a clean sheet since the end of Arsene Wenger's reign. Wow. Um, right, on to the game itself. Arsenal's four goals were scored by the most expensive players in the club's history. I think if I've got those numbers wrong, someone will dig me out. Pepe, 72 million. Aubameyang, 54 million. Lacazette, 44 million. Ozil, 42 million. It's about nearly 220 million pounds worth of attacking talent there. Wow. And it's the first time that Aubameyang, Lacazette and Pepe have scored in the same game. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. Right. Uh, and we're going to talk about the goals later. But there were 35 passes in the build-up to Ozil's goal, making it 10 passes longer than any goal scored in the Premier League this season. All 11 Arsenal players involved at least once. It was Ozil's first goal for 301 days. Yeah, he needs to improve that. And then Saka has eight goal assists in all competition, more than any other player in our team this season. Wow. We really do need to tie this guy down. This kid is uh, on, on a new he's, contract. He's, he's exceptional. He really is exceptional. Yeah, and, and I, I think that um, we really do need to make sure we can't get that one wrong. We mm. can't, you know. I think, you know, um, I spoke about it in some other shows. I think, you know, and I spoke about it after the game, and I know a lot of people have been sort of uh, flying into a bit of a panic over it, but as I said, you know, he's an academy kid who's on an academy kind of contract, you yeah. know, under 23. What's he on, about three grand a week? Yeah, you know I mean? He's, he's just on a low contract. But now that he's burst into the first team, obviously they need to sit down and look at his contract, and yeah. I'm sure it will get done. Mm. Although, you know, as I said in one of the other shows, that, you know, his representatives are now going to be asking different questions, That's like right, right. how many times will he be playing? Yeah. Because he's now becoming a very important player in Arsenal's squad. But it's brilliant. It's brilliant to see, you know, youngsters coming through the ranks and making the mark that he's done. Of course, looking at the team, you know, Saka, mm. Enkete, you could argue, argue Bellerin as well, mm. three products of the system, mm. you know. Um, and then you've got Willock on the bench as well. So, mm. you know, it's great to see these kids. It offers a lot of hope to all the kids underneath them, you know. Mm. And then we've got other kids that are out on loan at the moment that are doing really, really well as well. So mm. it's, it's great. Yeah, but we do need to make sure we tie them down. We can't afford yeah. to mess this one up. Um, the rumours that some of the top clubs have 
Yeah, well, in Dortmund, 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 Dortmund clubs looking right, at yeah, yeah, vultures I mean, yeah. round him. So yeah. yes, um, yeah, and he was outstanding ultimately yesterday. Now, when we went into this game against Newcastle, you, you know what you get with Newcastle. Yep. Uh, Part they, the bus. They They're literally. Put, yeah. you, know, you love that comment, don't you? Part the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Bruce certainly knows how to park the bus. Um, and they went with their five-four-one formation. Uh, they had the lowest XG of any team in the Premiership. XG is the amount of goals they're likely to score from mm. attacking movement, uh, shots at goal. Because basically, their main striker, Joe Linton, and it was summed up yesterday, he had something like 48 touches and only three in the box. Mm. He's never in the box, is he? No, he's never in the box. Because he's always having to help out in, in the yeah. structure that they play, which is, yeah. you know, it's a no wonder that he doesn't score any goals. No. But that was the shape that we were facing mm. yesterday, 5-4-1. Now, he made some interesting selections yesterday, didn't he, pre-match? Yeah, yeah, it was an interesting. When I, when I saw his selection at the start, the start of the match, right, uh, the Sabias one I could understand. Mm. Because I was just looking at it and saying, well, we're playing against a team, basically, we know they're going to park the bus. Mm. So what's the point in having Xhaka and Torreira there? You know mm. what I mean? You may as well have another attacking type player in there. And Sabias, I think, it was almost like that Santi role, wasn't it? That mm. sort of deep line playmakers would think what he wanted to do. The yeah. Nketiah one surprised me a bit. I thought mm. he would have maybe put a Bamiyang down the middle and went, you know, with Martinelli out wide. Mm. I, but, think, I think on, on the uh, choices he made, Sabias came in from what we're hearing because Guendouzi uh, was apparently training very poorly mm. in the camp uh, and there was a, um, he wasn't sort of like at the level that Arteta wants. And they had mm. strong words with him about his... Uh, training and yeah. so I think he left him out for that reason. I think that he wasn't trained at the level. So Bias has impressed him with the way that he's trained and he got his opportunity. Um, uh, Niketia I think was a, was a, I can understand it was lack has been off form. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, 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 that, I expected Lacquer to get dropped but I just thought that what he would have done, he would have put a Bamiang in the middle and put Martinelli out yeah. on that left hand side but I, I, I think for, for me personally uh, for his all his poor form uh, I think Lacazette th um, this is the type of game I would have played him yeah because he's going to hold the ball be up there. because when you're playing against, I mean the Ketia for me play, uh, him and Aubameyang very similar sort of players they're mm. sort of in the box type players mm. uh, whereas uh, Lacazette is the, the, is the one person who can sort of like come out uh, and so um I think Niketia against a deep block team with a Bamiyang in the team as well, mm. same sort of player. So I, I think away from home, mm. so it's slightly different. But Teams where you can get in behind, I think. Yeah. I, I think in the first half, uh, obviously uh, we did our normal thing. Uh, we literally looked to get Saka high mm -hmm. with a Jacker filling across, which is what he likes to do uh, when he pushes him high. But I thought in, in the first half, we were very passive. Uh, we didn't move the ball quick enough. When you're playing against a team who literally um, play with this sort of formation, you've got to move the ball quickly through the thirds. And also, you need to get your fullbacks high. So, and I think you needed to. There's a, really, I wanted to see Bellerin more up here in the first half, up here with Saka. But I think <laughs> well, you couldn't get high. No, no, because, because he I was I, having to deal with this game. Yeah, and, and, and there was one. Maximin there was, there was one brilliant moment in the first half when Alan sent Maximin, who I thought yeah. was the game's. You know, he's on the Newcastle side. He was yeah. like the, the most dangerous player on the pitch. Yeah, he's a good the, player. And and the way he s absolutely shot past Bellerin in the first half. And Bellerin's no slouch, no. I remember. Uh, was a, was it was, was a great thing to see yeah. actually. As much as you're an Arsenal fan, you, you you're looking at that thinking that was no. He's an exciting player. I remember yeah. when we played Newcastle first game of the season. Yeah. And I remember like he came off the bench. Mm. <laughs> he, he had a couple of moments. Then I just remember thinking, who's he? Because mm. they just bought him. And as I'm always saying to people, I'd like to see him and Adama Traore mm. in some sort of race. The two of them look <laughs> like they could be playing American football, you know what I mean? They, because yeah. they're so big, they're so strong and quick. That means if they get the run on you, you're done. Mm. You are not getting, you're not out muscling them and you're not, you know, they're so quick and, and he's got a fair bit of skill as well. Yeah. Right, so. Uh, this is where we were attacking in the first half mainly. Um, Pepe was more, more hugging the touchline, I thought, in this game. Uh, Saka was up high, obviously Abamian coming inside, Naketia playing here. But I, I think we struggled because they, had, uh, fight. they were defending sometimes with eight or nine behind the ball. Uh, and uh, Ozil in the first half was struggling to make an impression, I think, in these lines where you want him in here. Mm. Uh, and, and I think it's 
the key to me in the, the way this game changed was Sobias. Now, I thought in the first half, Sobias was more deeper. Mm. Uh, and, and the one thing you touched on it already is that he's very, he's very two-footed, he can move off one foot to the other, a bit like Santi, isn't he? Mm. Uh, and he can play in that sort of style. And he moves the ball quickly. So, uh, and I think that's what we need. But first and half, forward. And forward, yeah. Mm. So we weren't doing that first half. We, I thought we were more sideways in the first half. Mm. Uh, very passive. Uh, and we had no shot for the first 25 minutes. That tells you everything. That we weren't mm. getting into good positions to, to, to sort of attack their goal. But I thought the key to this whole uh, change was at half time. I think he asked Sobias to play slightly more further forward. Yeah. So obviously we pushed up more. And he's talked about in his... Uh, press conferences about wanting the team to play higher mm. um, and if you if you think the way Newcastle sat literally the whole game really they would sat with all these players behind the ball uh, and I think the key really was the connection to get Sobias higher up the pitch uh, getting vertical passes either out to, to, to the wings um, out to Saka or to Pepe mm. or to Ozil mm. uh, and I thought the second half that's what we did um, Really well. This is our first goal. Um, and Ooh, he's, got, <laughs> <laughs> he's really yeah, upped his know. game on his tech, hasn't he? Yeah. All right, first goal. Talk the, me through the, it then. The first goal, uh, the, when the ball gets played out by Sobias to Pepe, yeah. um, I, I, th I thought Danny Rose should really get across to him, but he sits mm. off him. And you've got Clark coming out here. So you've got two of them here, don't engage quick enough. And he gets the cross in towards Aubameyang. And, and I think that Fernandez really should be looking to challenge Aubameyang. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. And so um, he leaves it really to... to and Lazaro's on, Lazaro. the, Lazaro's on the wrong side. Yeah, on he the wrong was side. still, though, uh, absolutely brilliant. It header. was an out outstanding cross from Pepe. Yeah. And, and uh, an outstanding header. Because he had yeah. to get back to get power in the header. Get power. Ooh, and, and, and to get the, it across. But and I also, it was the placement of it. I mean, the Bradford is a very big keeper. Yeah. Um, and to, he just, it was so precise, right into the corner. Yeah. Aubameyang's not known for his heading ability, but that was, an, that was the goal of a, you know, striker that heads in lots of goals. Um, it was a really outstanding goal. We've got the second goal now. We'll get to the second goal in a minute, Robbie. Okay. So, so obviously that was the first goal. So, but once you've got that first goal, I mm. think then I'm waiting for Steve Bruce to make a change, thinking that he's now got a goal down. But he didn't change, did he? Mm. He basically stuck with this 5-4-1 mm. for a long time. He yeah, went, yeah, we're sit in there and then we'll get another... Because you know, I think they were playing for a draw. Uh, and I think, looking at this shape, I didn't see much change from them mm. until they were really late in the game, two down. And I think yeah. then he went more forth. He played three up front towards the end. But uh, basically, I thought that uh, his 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 whole his whole sort of uh, motto in this game really was a, a defensive line. Right, the second goal here, Robbie, and, and this was an outstanding goal, really. Mm. And this is uh, when we started to move Newcastle around more. And this is what I thought was different in the second half and the first half. First half, we were too passive in our uh, passing, players not taking chances. Second half, we had uh, first of all Saka. Uh, sort of like better movement, uh, getting into space, Aubameyang playing him in and then he nuts Max uh, Lazaro brilliant, uh, brilliant and plays it across. Cool. And it was an outstanding piece of play, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, and, and Pepe, it reminded me a bit of the Man United goal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, uh, exactly when he comes across, the way he wraps his foot around it. Yeah, first uh, time, bang. And, and really are for a keeper, isn't Yeah, it? an outstanding, an outstanding finish. Um, great goal, great goal. And then finally the third goal, which was uh, the goal we mentioned at the top of the show, the 35 pass movement, uh, which every player in the team uh, uh, touched the ball at least once. Ozil sort of like driving really from uh, midfield mm. and he was a lot better. Yeah, in this yeah game. he drove into, yeah. I mean they left a lot of space in front of him, he drove into that yeah. space which is sometimes he doesn't do enough. Showed a lot of pace in that as yeah. well. And then he found Pepe who then sort of drives into the box and as we can see there yeah. and Lacazette spins and gets it across and then Ozil Literally, mm. sort of like comes continues up. Continues his run, doesn't he? He continues his run up here. Yeah. To finish the goal off, and uh, I've said that De Bracca really. Yeah, uh, he should save that. De Bracca. Yeah, he kind of, kind of got. He, he was a little off balance and that, but yeah. he should really maybe have got a hand to it. Though, yeah. But it was. Uh, but it was yeah. good to see Ozil on the score sheet. Yeah. Especially after you give that stat of how long it's been since he scored. Yeah. One of the problems we've had this season: no goals from midfield, really. Mm. Right, and then finally the fourth goal, obviously, mm. Lacker's goal when he came off the bench. 
Uh, and the way the team celebrated that, it was an immense... Uh, it reminded me of... Remember, remember back in the day, Dennis Bergkamp, when he scored his first goal, when he, mm. when, you know, he was getting a lot of criticism for not scoring. Mm. And he got that first goal, it was like an enormous relief and like all the players and the fans and everybody were just so happy for the guy. Mm. Kind of reminded me of that, I mean, not as drastic as that, but because, you know, but La you could see what it meant to Lacazette. Because yeah. he missed it, didn't he? He's like he, a... Yeah, he, he, he sort of like uh, shanked it, didn't he? Yeah, uh, but it doesn't matter, as long as it goes uh, into uh, the back of the net. And he, and we hope that's going to be lift off for him now, you know what yeah. I mean? Because, you know, he's, he's, he, oh, yeah. I still think he's been working really hard, but he's just not been scoring them goals. Uh, and I, I thought in the end, sort of like four goals possibly flattered us. Uh, but in the end, a convincing victory. Mm. Um, I thought that uh, Nicolas Pepe, for me, was our man of the match. Agreed. Uh, I, I went with him as my man of the match. A lot of other people went with Saka, but I just yeah. thought that Pepe uh, was just so influential in yeah. everything. And he had... Uh, not only did he score the goal, he had two assists and also a pre-assist. Mm. But the other uh, thing about him is is that um, he, he had ten ball recoveries in the game. So you know when they, they said the reason Arteta's not picking him because he's not working hard enough, but he was working pretty hard mm. in this game. And this sort of, to me sort of like I said to you last week about possibly his ability. And, and uh, I heard Graham Sooner say last night um, on Sky Sports that he sees a, a, a player in there. Mm. And, and I still think that ultimately his role could be in here. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you're uh, pushing uh, for him to uh, play uh, centrally, aren't you? Uh, well, yeah. Instead of Ozil? Uh, in the long term, yeah. For the, for, the sim for the simple reason that I believe that um, getting one-on-one -on -one with mm. a player, and I know you say he can't pass at Ozil, but but I think he can run with the ball, run past players, draw mm. fouls, and draw people out that's, of shape. That's very true. And, and, that's and you say he can't pass, or he, he had a couple, of, he's had more assists than Ozil. You know, you know, and, you know, he's passing looked pretty decent in that game. And I'm not saying he's at nowhere near the level of Messi. But mm. Messi sort of like picks the ball up and drives from yeah. the centre and creates things. Uh, and, and I think he can do that for us in the long term. I think yeah. that his second season. I think he's, he's feeling his way in the Premier League. He's got four goals for us now. Mm. He's uh, involved in a lot of goal contributions. And, and I think ultimately he could become mm. a top player. Yeah, well, it was very encouraging and uh, we're going to have to keep this going. Let me just, before we go, right, explain to me why, how, how, how is it that these two guys, Mustafi and Xhaka, how is it that they're just so different now? They're playing so much better. I is it the structure yeah, of the team yeah. that's allowing them to look better yeah. or is it that them themselves have just lifted their game? What, what is it? I think it's um, a combination of both those things, Robbie. I think the structure of the team. Uh, I think that they've uh, lifted their performance, uh, the belief in the manager. The manager's given them responsibility. But I think that um, Jacker, he's got Jacker playing in areas of the pitch where he's more comfortable. Mm. Uh, and, he, and the thing is... It, he can ping the long ball still, and he still does that, but he's, he's, I think he's not putting him in positions where his lack of mobility is being shown up. Mm. Mustafi, to me, is benefiting from the better team shape, uh, and, but keeping it simple. Uh, mm. and, and to be honest with you, uh, the test will come for the likes of Mustafi, uh, Louise, and Jack are probably when we play harder sides. Uh, when, mm. But at the well, moment... Yeah, Everton game will be yeah, a Ever test, Everton yeah. game, and, and I think Everton are... It's an interesting game that next week because yeah. they, Ancelotti has come in there and really done a good job. Yeah, and so that will be up. Like, Ricarlison and Calvert Lewin yeah. are good players, and that will be a real test. But yeah. I think it's but basically they're benefiting from the improvements that Arteta's mm. has made to the team and the structure. Yeah, because and and you could throw Louise into that as well. It just looks so much more solid, and of course, two clean sheets in a row. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that for a very long time no, um, um, for Arsenal. So that that was um, brilliant. So a fantastic win for Arsenal. Um, and uh, thanks to Graham as usual for breaking it down. Um, that was brilliant. Of course, uh, Olympiacos away. That's not going to be an easy game, you know, going to a real cauldron there. But uh, we'd be quite confident we could get some. Maybe our draws may not be a bad move in that game. You know what I mean? Maybe we take a draw in that game. Um, do you think he'll change the team up much? I think there'll be changes. I do think there'll be changes in that game. I think. Um, I don't know, I think I'd be looking in that game to bring in possibly Lacazette and also, uh, mm, I'd, be, I'd be looking to bring Martinelli into that. He's, his form in the Europa League has been outstanding. He's been scoring so many goals in the Europa League. I, I think he has to start in that. 
possibly Kalasinac could come back into that as well. You know what I mean? Because he was on the bench yesterday as well. I, so, I, th I think I think the performance of Sabias, the way yeah. he orchestrated, orchestrated the play yesterday, has given yeah. the manager an interesting conundrum. I, do, I think Torreira will come back into that game and, alongside Xhaka. And I, and I think that uh, 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 when we play away from home, there's an argument for Torreira to play as yeah. he's a bit of a ball winner. Mm. Sabias, when we're at home, because he's more of a ball progressor. Yeah. The same as I think there's an argument for Bamiang playing centrally away from home when you want pace. Yeah. Well, home. I think you know. I think this against Olympiacos, I go Bamiang down the middle. I go. I'd have. Pepe in and on Martin. the right hand side of Martinelli. Martinelli's record in Europa League has been outstanding. I just can't say how you could possibly leave him out of a, a Europa League game. Uh, he has to start in that game, in my opinion. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens at the back. Do we bring in that Pablo Mari, mm. who's the the new guy? You know, I mean, um, that could be a decent game to bring him in. Mm. Maybe leave out somebody like uh, Mustafi for that game. But then how do you drop Mustafi at the moment? It's going to be really interesting to see that team selection for that game. You don't want to change your defence around too much, to be honest. No, no, no. no but we've said, this guy in, yeah, so... But at the same time, he, he's going to obviously manage it. He's got players like Maitland-Niles knocking on the door, Socrates knocking on the door, yeah. Klesnack knocking on the door, and Pablo Mari, who, who, mm. who basically look really good in training. So mm. it'll be interesting to see what he does. I think Martinez would definitely... Well, Cedric be fit. You're talking about Maitland-Niles. Will Cedric be fit? I don't think it's game. quite a bit early yeah. for him, yeah. yeah. All right, well, listen, we're looking forward to it. It's good that we've got these problems at the moment because uh, for a lot of the season, there's been a lot of injuries. So it's good that we've got players there. I'm thinking, who should we play? We haven't even mentioned Gwendouzi as well. So, but looking forward to that game. And then, of course, next weekend, it's Everton. Um, Graham will be back next week to talk us through, hopefully, two wins.